Hi, welcome to Physics with Ben. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video to your audience. In today's video, I want to us to look at why 2024 physics 3 alternative B particles. I've done all the video series on alternative A. So you just click in the description box below and you will find the video links to alternative A. Question 1, question 2, and question 3. So I want to help us with question 1 and question number 2 in alternative B particles. But question number 1 is, uh, is optics. I will make a video on that. This particular video I'm making is question number 2 electricity. So, um, what I have seen from question number two is that we are going to have a circuit diagram as the one I will be drawing very shortly, uh, any moment from now. And just watch this video and it's to be like a guide to you to help you to perform the experiment. In fact, question number two is the most simplest uh, experiment for this particular year. So without wasting more time, um, question number two, the designers want us to use a variable DC source. Uh, this is our DC source, the Tiger Head battery, 1.5 volt each. So what will happen is that you be using, uh, you be changing the the cells. Like you start with one cell, two cell, three, four, five. So what does that ring in your head? The examiners are trying to uh, tell the candidate to verify Ohm's law. Look, Ohm's law states that provided the temperature and other physical conditions are kept constant, the current flowing through a conducting material, e.g., a wire, is directly proportional to the potential difference across the ends, meaning increase in the potential difference will cause an increase in the rate of flow of current so from v is equals to i r this is the equation that is controlling the experiment in such a way that r is going to be the constant in the experiment r will be a constant and as you increase v i will increase such that we're going to have an increase increase or decrease decrease trend so that our graph may, may pass through the origin with no intercepts. So first things first, let us uh, draw the circuit diagram. So uh, in that experiment, we make use of the battery racket and the variable DC source, connecting wires, voltmeter, the ammeter, the standard resistor, and the key. Uh, disclaimer, this is not exactly how the exams may look like on the T day. It may be something like this because they always tell you I'm order additional materials. So I don't know the other additional materials they're, they're going to be using for this experiment for. But for based on the stuff that we provided, these are what we need for the experiment. So let's draw the circuit diagram. So you want to have something like this. Uh, a standard resistor will be here. And these are the connecting wires. So this is our standard resistor R. And the voltmeter will be connected across the standard resistor. Good. And the ammeter will be connected in series. So we're going to run the experiment for five times. One, two, three, four, five. So let's draw it backward. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. And so this is our circuit diagram. And uh, this here will be the key to control the rate of flow of current. And here's our plus side or our, this our negative side. So that the current will flow in this direction. So this is our circuit diagram for the connection. So the next thing you are going to see is a circuit diagram. So we are going to connect the circuit diagram. This is the, the ammeter, the, the voltmeter, 
the ammeter, the resistor, and this. So we connect the battery to the ammeter, and then we connect uh, from here to the key. We connect from from the key. Mind you, the resistor has no polarity. You can connect. You can do the connection at at both ends. So this is from the key to the resistor, the standard resistor. And from the standard resistor, from the standard resistor. So, so the ammeter. Now, this ammeter is a two-way ammeter. We have zero to three and zero to one. Click in the description box below, and you see the video on how I, I taught us how to use this particular ammeter. So we are using the down calibration, zero to three, not zero to one. So zero to three. Good. So next up, we are going to connect the voltmeter across the, the voltmeter across. The standard resistor. Good. This is it. The voltmeter across the standard resistor. So our circuit diagram is here. So this is the circuit diagram and this is the circuit connection. We have one, two, three, four. Five, six, six connecting wires. So uh, next up, we are going to have a table of values for this experiment. So if you have your wire pass question, uh, this question is gotten from uh, wire 2026, question number three. This is the circuit diagram I was showing you. This is the circuit diagram. And uh, this symbol is a symbol for a variable D, uh, DC source E with the dot dot but what I did was that I use this I use this I use this in place of E E dot dot so this is that for that so uh, you can screenshot I don't want to waste time this is the question uh, and uh, this is the other part of it. Good. Good. So uh, the next thing you are going to see is table of values. I taught us how to generate table of values, and you can click in the description box below to find the video link on how to find a table of values. So our uh, table of values. So we have, we have. Serial, uh, serial number, meaning the number of times we are going to run the experiment. Okay, so a quick one. I'm just going to pick this stuff here. You are provided with a variable DC power supply E. Uh, two ohm res standard resistor. So our standard resistor, any constant we record on the top here. So 2.00 ohm standard resistor. You record all this constant on the table of, on the top of the table of values. And so uh, a key, an ammeter, and the voltmeter, and other necessary materials. So this is the setup as you can see here. This is the setup here. Good. Now next up, set up the circuit as shown in the diagram above. We have already done that. Close the key and uh, take the record on the voltmeter take the take and record the vote voltmeter reading v take and record the corresponding ammeter reading i evaluate i inverse uh, v inverse i inverse repeat the procedure for four other values so this is how our table of values is going to look like based on what you have here so we have a uh, column for e EMF in volts, 
we have column for uh, V in volts, that is from the, from the voltmeter. And then we have the current in amps. And then we have V inverse slash volts inverse. And then we have I inverse slash amps inverse. So we call this the composite table. You don't do this, you don't record it the way you're going to lose your marks. So we have to run it for one, two, three, four, and five times. And this is how your table of values would look like. If you have your pen and the paper, just do as I'm doing right now in your book. If you're just watching this video, this is alternative B, 2024 YEC physics practicals. So this is your table of values. So the first value for the EMF from this, we have the we have 1.5 volts. That's the first value. 1 1.5 volts. But you will record 1.5 volts. You record uh, 1.50. That is it. The second value is a uh, 3.0 volts. You have 3.00 volts. You have 4.5 volts, you record 4.50 volts. You have 6.0, record 6.00, you have 7.4, record 7 points. That's supposed to be 7.5. This, this is a typo error, not 7.4. We have 7.5, so record 7.50 volts. So the next thing is to run the experiment. This is the most simplest experiment for this year. So we are going to be running it this way uh, since we are going to be preparing it. We, let's, let's see how the circuit runs. So let's, uh, before you do that, you have to be sure that your cell is up to 1.5 volts. How do you do that? You plug it in here and you test. You test it here. So this is a... Uh, this is less than 1.5, so you won't use this. You won't use this, so you put it aside. So let's test for this. This is 1.4. This is 1.4. We can't use that. We can't use that. So to, to avoid uh, over testing, I am going to bring out brand new cells and that will be enough for me. So we're going to use this for this experiment. So this cell should give us, although some cells that are not uh, that good, but we hope that this cells will do what you are looking for. So you remove this cell and so don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share this video. Alternative B, 2024 YX is 3 practicals current electricity good exactly 1.5 exactly 1.5 so we are we are going to make use of these cells now so we have gotten our cells right now so let's get to work so we are going to put everything here this is 1.5 plus 1.5 gives you 3 Plus 1.5 gives you 4.5. Plus 1.5 gives you. Uh, be, be mindful that your cells, the input one is, is spoiled, so we throw it away. So plus another 1.5. Plus another 1.5. If you have something like this, it will, it will be good for you. So we are done testing the cells. At this point, we test for the circuit. Now, if your connection is correct, if your connection is correct, your ammeter will read clockwise and your voltmeter will read clockwise. But if your connection is not correct, all of them will go anti-clockwise. So let's test and see. So this is a plus and this is negative. They are going anti-clockwise. Watch the, the deflection on the ammeter. You see, both are going anti-clockwise. 
both are going anti-clockwise so what do we do you just come back here and switch switch it so now uh, negative is this side and our plus is on the other side so what you see now is that they will read clockwise now good you can see clockwise reading and also clockwise reading good so that is that for that so back here on our diagram we want to correct it we just have to change this to be our negative and this to be our plus we just switch it off that's all so i'm going to run one value for us so what will happen here is that we are going to be connecting like this this is we connect here we move here we move here we move here we move here and we take reading for everything so our first reading is when the cell when the emf was 1.5 volts what was our reading now remember i told you something we're working with zero to three the calibration is this zero to three now we need to know the value of each calibration each small small line how do you do that 0 0.6 divided by 10 if in between 0, 0 to 0 0.6 there are small small uh, 10 calibrations so 0 0.6 divided by 10 gives you 0 0.06. So each value, each small line here is 0 0.06. So you times whatever you are doing by that value. So on the ammeter region, we have, we have 0 0.06. On the voltmeter region, what do you have? This one is very simple, 0 to 5. So in between 0 to 1, you have one, one, uh, 10 small, small, uh, calibration so 1 divided by 10 gives you that answer so 1 divided by 10 this is 0 0.1 so on the voltmeter reading you have 0 0.1 right 0 0.1 volts oh uh, let me confirm that again 0 0.6 divided by 10 sorry this was 0 0.06 this was 0 0.06 so on the ammeter region, you have 0 0.06 for each small line. On the voltmeter region, you have 0 0.1 units, uh, 0 0.1 units for each calibration. This will guide us on what we are doing. So let's roll it. We are going to run our first value. And our first value will start with just a cell. So this is from here to here, that is a cell. And so we'll see the region on the ammeter. On the ammeter, we have this is to avoid error due to parallels, you have to stand straight up. So, this is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, four point five. So, we have four point five. On the voltmeter reading, you have you have one, one, two, three, four. You have four on the dots, so you have four on the bottom region. So um, that four is just four. So you say zero point one times four, zero point one times four. That gives you zero point zero zero point four. So you record you record zero point four zero. That is it. For the voltage reading, you have four. 4.5 times this. So you have 4.5 times 0 0.06 and that gives you 0 0.27. So you record you record 0 0.27. And that is the first reading. So the second reading, let's go to the second reading. Now on each of your reading, endeavor to break the circuit or the battery will run down. So let's do for the second reading. This is we are on point number three now, uh, three point zero zero. So this is three point zero zero. So on the ammeter reading, what do we have? We have uh, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight. We have eight on the ammeter reading, and on the voltmeter reading, we have uh, this is eight point five. That's this is five six seven eight eight point five so we have 
we have 8.5. We have 8.5. So we have 8 for the diameter region, that is 8 times 0 0.06. That gives us 0 0.48. So on the on the diameter region, we have 0 0.48. 0 0.48 why the voting that we have we have 8 we have 8.5 times 0 0.1 we have 0 0.85 so we record uh, 0 0.85 then the next we have is uh, we have let's do for 4.5 so this is a uh, this is 4.5 you clip it here and then you make the circuit so we <clears throat> we have this is 10 this is 10 11 that is 11 that's 11 on the dot this is 10 11 ammeter you have you have 11 for the ammeter you have you have um, this is 1 Point one. This is ten point one point two point two five. So this is ten. Sorry, this is ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. So we have thirteen here. So for the voltmeter reading, we have thirteen. Thirteen times zero point one. That gives us one point three. So we record. We record one point. Three zero. For the ammeter, we have eleven. So we have eleven times zero point zero six. That gives us zero point six six. So we record zero point six six. So we we run for the next value, which is a, a six. So this is six, and you plug in the key, and let's see what we have here. So this is a uh, 10, 11, 12, 10, 11, 12. This one is 12. Uh, we have 12 on the ammeter reading. And on the voltmeter reading, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, we have 14. We have 14. Good. So we record, let's break the second cell down on the battery down. So we have, ammeter we have 12 times 0 0.06. That gives us, uh, ammeter this is 0 0.72. And then we have 14, we have 14 times 0 0.1. That gives us 1.4. So we have 1.40, that's what you record. Then the next you have is, uh, you have, um, the last value so you take it here which is a uh, 7.5 so you plug the key and let's see what we have 15 on the dot ammeter reading 15 voltmeter reading this is a uh, voltmeter reading this is a uh, 15 16 16.5 you have 16.5. Yes, 15, 16.5. So we record ammeter reading 15 times 0 0.06. You do that, you have you have 0 0.90. For the voltage reading, you have 16.5 times 0 0.1. You have 1, 1.65. The next thing is you find the inverse. We are done with the experiment. Very, very simple experiment is to find the inverse of this. The inverse you have to record to three decimal places. Three decimal places each. So you have 1 over 1 divided by 0 0.4, that gives you 2.3.
So you record two, I mean 2.5, record 2.500. 0, 0. So one divide by 0 0.4, we have 2.500 0, 0, to trisma places. So you have one divide by 0 0.27, you have you have three point seven zero four. You do that for all the values. So this is the trend. This is the table of values for this experiment. So now let's observe the trend. This were the original values v and i. Between v and i, I told us that from from Ohm's law from this equation, it means that. Increase in voltage will increase current. So we're going to have increase, increase. So let's check and see. V is increasing down from 0 0.1 to 1.6. I is increasing down from 0 0.2 to 0 0.9. So the trend of the experiment is increase, increase. Let's look at V, v, uh, v inverse and I inverse. V inverse is decreasing down. I inverse is also decreasing down. So you have decrease, decrease. You have increase, increase trend and decrease, decrease trend. So this is the experiment, the table of values for the experiment. So next up, you will see the graph. I taught us how to plot the graph. So you're going to plot, the designers asked us to plot the graph of, uh, the graph of, um, Plot the graph of V inverse on the vertical axis and I inverse on the horizontal axis. So we're going to plot this graph on the Y axis and the I inverse on the horizontal axis. Welcome back. This is the table of values and right now I want to guide us on how to plot this particular graph. Uh, it has been long I plot graph on this channel because I have plotted so many graphs. You can go through all the experimental videos on my channel and you see how I plot the graphs. I'm going to use the same pattern today. The reason why I choose to plot this graph is because of my new subscribers and my new followers. And I'm doing this to guide them in this particular exam and this video is this, this video of plotting graph the pattern is the same with all the graphs that I have plotted before so please pay maximum attention as I lead you to the step-by-step -step approach of plotting physics graph I am a WIAC um, examiner and I mark WIAC almost every year and I am speaking like an insider where and where they can deduct your marks. So the graph I am plotting here, I am plotting the graph Wyek would love you to plot. The Wyek standard graph is what I'm plotting now. So please pay maximum attention. So we have to plot the graph of Y on the vertical axis and X, and I mean uh, V inverse on the vertical axis and I inverse on the horizontal axis. So how do you go about it? Very simple. The first things first that we need to know, we need to do is to consider the highest value and then the lowest value for both of the columns. That's number one. Number two, we have to de uh, decide a scale, a suitable scale for this graph. Now, before I proceed, there's something I want to correct. Some, uh, some candidates are in the habit of, when they ask them to plot the graph of V inverse against I inverse, you're going to write Y and then X. Please. Put the parameters don't go and put y and x allow y and x to rest just use the parameters given to you in the examination so v inverse will be here and i inverse will be here number two some candidates this is how they they just copy all the values the way they are here so this is the maximum value it is here they just put it this graph there's no single scale here the y will mark you down good now how are you going to plot your graph I have reduced the work for us here. Just go through this and you will see what I have done. I have chosen my scale. I haven't studied the, the V inverse and the I inverse column. This is the scale that I have chosen for the graph. 
uh, I choose this scale based on uh, my highest value here and my lowest value here. So while plot plotting your graph, this is what you need to know. Your graph must occupy at least half of this. Uh, you can't plot a physics graph where you where you have to uh, something like this. Good. Some people will start their graph here and there is no space at the bottom of the graph. That is a very, very wrong graph. What if they ask you to find the intercept on the vertical axis and the intercept is a negative one? You are going to score zero on the, on, on the intercept. So it is uh, very, very important as you plot your graph, you shift it up and then you occupy up and then you also occupy down. Now, if you, if you observe, I put a dot here and then a dot here. The highest value here is a uh, 2.5, and the lowest value here is a um, 0.6. So I mean, uh, yeah, 0.606. That is the lowest value here. Now the scale I have chosen here is a uh, 2 cm to represent 0.5. This is a YX standard graph. All that you see here, they are in 2 2 cm. In in 1 cm, you have five small small boxes. Why in 2CM you have 10 small small boxes? Let's count. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in every uh, 10, uh, 2CM you have 10 small small boxes. And that is what I just did right now. Good. Now, let us do something here and see if this thing will work. I said 2CM to represent 0 0.5 units, meaning each of the two CM, I will count 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. Good. Now I'm going to do something. I'll, I'll say uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times 0 0.5. If I'm able to get the highest value here, then I, I can shift my graph from here to this place and not down here. So I can occupy up and down. Good. Now let's try it and see. So as I was saying, let's try it. So we have a, we have 0 0.5 times 5. I got 2.5. You see that? So my graph, I'm going to draw, use this place to draw my horizontal line. So I will use up and then I will use down. This is exactly what Wyeck would love to do. You can't plot your graph somewhere here and then the graph will end here. That is wrong. So from here, look at this. This is one two three four five you see this point uh the, the highest value is here and i still have space up there i still have space down here so this is how to plot your graph so i will draw this line here uh this is my horizontal line and so i will draw my horizontal line here good so the next thing we are going to do is we have we have represented this very well from here to a point up here we can occupy all of these values now let's look at the values on the horizontal axis we said on the horizontal axis four centimeters to represent one unit so the highest value here is 3.7 that is approximately four centimeters i mean four so we we'll start from one to, to one to four. So we said four cm to one unit. So let's see. From here, you won't start on this on this edge. That is wrong. So you have to shift a little bit and start inside. So this is this is four cm. This is one. This is two. This is three, and this is four. So we still have a space left here. So we are going to draw our horizontal our vertical line from here. You don't use pen to plot your graph. I am using pen here as a teacher so that this will be very, very clear. You can see it very clear. So I am done dividing my graph. And so you must always start all physics graph from the origin. So you write here 0, 0. All physics graph must start from the origin. So we are done with that. The next thing to do is to uh, plug in these values. We said 0 0.5 to present 2 cm so 
from here to here this is 0 0.5 you see the lowest value here was 0 0.60 i did not do this nonsense that some candidates will do and they'll mark them down they will start with the with the lowest value on the graph this is the lowest value they will start with it they'll progress to the next one this you're going to get zero from your graph so i started from somewhere 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 in that order good good so you see i have included all the values 0 0.5 1 1.5 2 2.5 so all these values are represented they're represented right now good so let's represent the values on the horizontal axis so on the horizontal axis, we are not going to write this nonsense. This is nonsense. They will mark you down. They will mark you down. They will mark you down. We said 4 cm to 1 unit, meaning 4 cm, we put 1. So this is 4 cm. This is 2 cm. This is 4 cm. We put 1 here. And this is, this is 2. And this is 3. And this is 4. The next thing is you put an arrow here in the k direction of your graph. This is V inverse slash both inverse. And this is I inverse slash A inverse. What I just did carries half half mark. You don't do it, the marks are gone. So don't go and write Y and X here. So we are almost done. The next thing to do is to find the value for each small, small box. So what will you do? 1 divide by 20. This is 10, this is 20. 1 divide by 20 and that is exactly what I did here. So the value for each small box here is simply 1 divide by 20 and that will give you 0 0.05 uh, units. So the up one, the value for each small box is simply uh, 0 0.5 divide by 10 that would also give you 0 0.05 so the value for each small box is very very important it helps you to get precise uh plottings on your graph so next up we are going to plot our graph if you observe i did something here we are going to divide everything here by the value for each small small box it is a coincidence that both coordinates the y and the x coordinates have the same uh, value for each small small box that is because of the divisions uh, up here so we're going to divide every stuff here by this value of each small small box so that we get the exact number i will do that for one value and then you understand what i'm talking about so let's plot the first value we say 2.5 divided by 0 0.05 so we say uh 2.5 divided by 0 0.05 what do you have you have 50 so it means that we are going to count 50 small small boxes beginning from the from the bottom here so let's count this is this is 10 20 30 40 50 so it means that this 2.5 is found on the 50th uh, box 50th small small box now we want to plot uh, when it was 2.5 it was 3.704 so we're going to divide 3.704 by, by this. So we write that uh, 3.704 divide by this, divide by 0 0.05. We have uh, 74.01. We round it up to the nearest whole number. That is 74. So we are going to count 74 small, small boxes on the horizontal axis let's go this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 74 this is 1 2 3 4 good so where is 74 and this is 74 uh, box where is 74 and this line intersects that is where we are going to plot our point so you put a ruler so that you don't miss up the lines so this is it so this is the point just observe what i'm doing 
You see that? Good. So this is a point where 74, where this is a point where 3.704 and 2.5 intersect. So you put a dot and put a circle. You have plotted one point. So you repeat that procedure for all the other points. Let's do for 1.7, 1.1700. So we have 1.7, sorry, 1.176 uh, divided by 0 0.05. That will give us 23.5. You round it up to this whole number, that is 24. So we are going to count 24 small, small boxes up here. So this is, this is a 10, 20, let's count 4. 1, 2. Three, four. That is where that point is. So uh, when it was 1.7, 1 1.17, 1 it was 2.083. So we write 2.083. 2. 2.083 uh, divided by 0 0.05. What do we have? We have 41.66. The nearest whole number you have 42. So we are going to count for the two small boxes on the horizontal axis. So let's count. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. 42. This is 1, 2. So 42. So we trace this up. We trace this. line you have to be extremely calm when you are plotting graphs in physics you see that this line to this point so you put a dot here and then you put a circle so we have succeeded in plotting two points so let's plot the other point together See, we are done with our graph we are done with our graph so this is so another point here so this is we have one two three four five all the points represented so the next thing to do right now is uh, is to find is to draw a line of best fit so this is the ruler represent that you have to use to plot your graph 30 cm transparent ruler please don't use another ruler you can get this 150 naira in nigeria here 150 is enough you can get this thing so let's get to work so this is our line of best fit we want to plot we want to so your line of best fit must touch at least three points uh, in every experiment there is what i call the black sheep value So your graph, your line of best fit must touch at least three points. So there's a point here, there's a point here, there's a point here. So these two points are out of the line. There's, there's, there's no problem. This point, this point, this point. Now, this point stops here, stopped here. Some student will draw this line and the line will stop here. This line will not extend up here. Some will just draw from this point to this point. And that is how they will stop. I see some authors doing this, and I think that is not right. 
I won't mention their names. So please, the line must start from here. It's what I'm doing. Don't stop it here. From here, let's draw it. You draw it once. Straight down. Continue with it. Down to this side. This is how to draw your line of best sticks. And then you take it out. Good. So, they ask us to find the intercepts on the vertical axis. I forgot something which I always do in all my videos. Prediction of the type of graph you are plotting. When you have an increase, increase trend, there are three graphs that you must have. This graph or this graph, sorry, a graph passing through the origin with no intercept. This graph or this graph. These are the three possible graphs that you must have when you are plotting an increase, increase or decrease, decrease trend graph. So we, we ended up getting this particular one. And so our intercept is right here. This is where our intercept is. Our intercept, uh, it is written uh, change, change in C. That is the intercept, change in C. So from this point to this point is plus five. So our intercept is minus five. So our intercept here is minus, minus zero, minus zero point five. Pay votes. That is the intercept. So the next thing we are going to do is to draw out our triangle and then also uh, find the slope of the graph. And that would be maybe the end of the video. Why draw your triangle? Make it, draw it to be very, very big. Don't draw a small triangle. Because when your triangle is small, you will have error in your graph. So we're gonna pick this point. Uh, we will pick this point for our triangle. See what I'm doing? We pick uh, this point again for our triangle. And we'll pick this point again for our triangle. And so we draw our triangle as follows. Watch what I'm doing, please. It has been long I plot graph on this channel, so I have to do it this year. This is it. Good. You. This one is large enough, it's good. The next thing is you write here change in V inverse. Here write change in I inverse. The next thing is you put dotted uh, broken lines. You connect them to from this point to meet the vertical axis. Good. So you connect them like this. This is dot 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 dot. Good. You connect this as well. You connect this as well. So connect this. You are doing this so that while plotting your graph, you don't make mistake and choose the wrong line. You see what I'm doing? Do exactly as I do. So here you write I inverse to here is I inverse one. Here is V inverse 2. Here is V inverse 1. This is what I'm saying. You 
see I'm plotting using a, a pen, but you can you see that there's no mistake. Good. Now this is when you will know the value of this that you have written here. This is when you will make maximum use of it again. Because you're gonna count small small boxes and times it by these values. Good. Now let's find the slope of the graph. Doing this only gives you your full max. Your full max from YEC. This is the perfect way of plotting graph. The next thing is to find the slope. The slope of the graph. So based on this information that we have here, the slope of the graph is given to be change in V inverse over change in R inverse. Don't go and write change in Y over change in X. I hate seeing that. So this is the same thing as change in V to change in V to inverse minus minus V this divide by I2 minus I1. This only carries one mark. You must not play with this. So you now slot in the values. Our V2 is what? Our V2 is here. How do you go about it? You count the number of small, small boxes and times it by this. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. So 46 times uh, 46 times 0 0.05, 2.3. So V2 is what? 2. 0.3 minus 3 minus v1 v1 is down here v1 is exactly on 0 0.5 you see that 0 0.5 so you write minus 0 0.5 divided by i2 i2 is what i2 is exactly on this so this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 so 70, 70 times 0 0.05, that will give you 3.5. So you have 3.5 minus I1. This is where I1 is. So this is 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you write uh, 20, uh, 24 times 0. 0 0.5 that will give you 1.2 point, point the next thing that you evaluate the next thing is that you evaluate so this is your slope to 1 2 3 4 3 4 this map places but what's the unit some candidates will just write it without putting units you're gonna miss a mark or even half a mark so how do you know you know the slope? From the slope, from the slope, this is what we have. Slope is simply equals to 1 over V divided by 1 over I. So this implies that 1 over V uh, times 1 times I over 1. So our slope is the same thing as the current divided by the voltage. This is the slope. Now let's let's dig it out. We agree that the slope, the slope is a, uh, the slope is equal to I over V. So from Ohm's law, V is equal to I R. It implies that R is equal to V over I. This is it. 
So the slope is the inverse of resistance. So it means that the slope is R inverse. So it implies that the slope of the graph is equal to 1 over V is equal to, I mean, sorry, I over V is equal to 1 over R. This is the slope of the graph. So intuitively, the slope of the graph is equal to 1 all over R. So it means that 1 is equal to S times R. So it means that So it means that R is equal to 1 all over S. So, and the unit is going to be ohm. So it means that 1 all over the slope would give you the value of the unknown resistance used during the experiment. The value of the unknown resistance, R. This R that was used, this is the aim of the experiment. So when we plug that in, what are we going to get? So the examiners did not ask this, but it is very, very important that you know this as a student and also as a teacher. So we write that R is equal to. So back to what I was saying, the, the unit for the slope is, is this. That is the unit for the slope. Therefore, the slope is that. So, we're going to say that the slope is, uh, the unknown resistance is R equals to 1 over 0 0.7826. So, 1 divided by 0 0.7826. So, we have 1.7826. Two seven, uh, 1.278. So the unknown resistance, maybe perhaps, maybe it was not two, yeah, is equal to 1.278 ohm. So this is the slope. So uh, to this, I believe we have done everything that the examiners wanted us to do. And the intercept for the graph was also calculated. So this is the slope, and uh, that, 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 and this is your graph, and this is your table of values. They ask other questions here that I don't want to to look into. Uh, precautions for the experiments. Uh, I ensured tight connection. Number two, I avoided error due to parallax while taking reading on the both meter and on the arm meter. Those are the precautions that you have to state. So uh, go ahead and read everything about current electricity, internal resistance, loss voltage, terminal potential difference, all of those stuff, internal resistance, uh, potentiometer, shunt and multiplier, Ohm's law, Read all of that, they may ask you those questions in the BI and the BII. To this, I believe we have come to the end of this experiment. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video to those that need it. Try us to support Physics with Ben so that we can make more videos like this. It takes time, money, and energy for me to produce videos like this for you guys. So try also to support this channel so that we can produce more videos that are useful like this. I wish you guys success. Straight A's in your physics exams this year. Bye-bye and God bless you.